Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Corona. Although, as you'll know, if you're watching up at this point, much to cooking with Corona, we are in fact cooking in lockdown, in my case, tier 4. That is, of course, unless you're watching this and you're suffering from COVID-19, in which case I suppose you are in fact cooking with Corona, but with respect to the connotations within that sentence. Now, previous recipes of mine have involved me making pastry. You've seen in the blueberry one how I make pastry, you will have seen me make Christmas mincemeat, the sweet kind, but today uh, I'm going to be combining these two things and I'm also going to show you how to make savoury mince pies. Because as recently as when my parents were young, uh, they were still being sold as savoury dishes. Little by little, uh, things like spices, uh, nutmeg and other things that we associate with Christmas time getting added to it was ultimately a sweet dish entirely. And only the suet remained is the savoury thing that you had with it. Well, I found a New Zealand recipe, and I reckon that's as close as we're going to get to the sort of savoury ones that used to be sold in London. The hairy bikers have a recipe as well. Now, I'm going to make some mints then. A tablespoonful of vegetable oil, and then add the mints. Put that in the frying pan, and then dice some onions. Two. I've chopped, in fact, three onions here and I've also you might see grated some carrot to add a little symmetry to the um, sweet Christmas mincemeat that I made. May add a little ginger or nutmeg but first we need to fry it. I'm going to put some of this pepper which is obviously mixed with turmeric in my case never seem to be able to get rid of it and I'm going to grate some of this nutmeg in as well. Now here you can see I've added some minced beef the original recipe says 500 grams, I actually didn't measure this, but never mind, I'm sure it'll work. Now I'm going to pour some beef stock into this. Same beef stock that you saw me make in a previous recipe. Alright, now I'm going to put some of this. I'm going to put the filling into the pies. These here are the gluten-free ones that I made uh, before, but I'm going to put it into all of them. I'm going to start with this so I don't want to contaminate uh, these. Like so. Now, you can see here how I'm just flattening this one out to give this a lid. The mutton pie, I'm going to put some, yeah, mutton, that too is going to go in. And the oven at 130 degrees. Should have been preheated, but it isn't. The mutton I've been cooking for about 25 minutes. And this uh, is interesting because for whatever reason, mutton, once regarded as almost a peasant dish, because it was cheaper than lamb, it still is, uh, becomes plentiful around Christmas time, I suppose, for a poor man's fare. Well, I've just put some in these two pies here for my gluten-free uh, family member with a little, few little pieces of chopped onion. I don't know how well you can see. I'm going to scrape some ginger over them, and then I'm going to cover them too. Very well, here is the Christmas mincemeat, the sweet stuff. I'm going to put that in to the gluten-free pastry first. They're more like mince crumbles than mince pies, but still we'll put them in. Cover them in egg yolk first, of course. That, my friends, are what the gluten-free pastry looks like. 10 minutes, I guess, for about 200 degrees Celsius. The non-gluten-free uh, short crust pastry, 55 grams of butter, or two ounces, water in there, maybe a pinch of salt, and now we add the flour. 125 grams, but probably per batch. Just flatten it out once it's had its time in the fridge. Since cellophane, you may notice. Make it easier, should have done that, but the gluten-free kind worked out rather awkwardly. The gluten-free ones, as you've seen, I've put in little slots. 
but uh, the normal ones I've had to put in a large pie dish because I just found the pastry so difficult to make. I ought to mention that the reason that uh, we have mince pies is because it's supposed to look something like the thing that Christ was born in, the trough-like thing for his crib. And I suppose this comes closest to what it would have been like. I'm just going to, you can just see how I'm rolling out this one, I'm going to use that and cover it up. I'm going to assume that you put them in for about the same time as if you're doing a batch, which is about um, 30 minutes. 30 minutes for this one, maybe less for that, but on the other hand it's such a mess I've no idea. Here are the pies then, the sweet and the savoury. Try it yourself if you fancy. Very well. You can see I've just had the savoury mince pie with my family. It was a great success. Here's a slice of it left. This is some excess mince that's left over that I don't actually have time to wrap into pastry because I'm I'm cutting it too fine before I shall need to throw it. And here's a little horseradish mash and that, that I'm making with the sweetened gammon which you'll see in one of my next dishes. Make sure that the mince is still all right. Mm, it is. And the pastry. No. It's tough pastry, but it's tasty pastry. Nothing like a good hard pie crust. Right. So, that's sweet and savoury mince pie. Try it yourself if you like, if you fancy. If you don't fancy, then don't. Thanks very much, and Happy Christmas and New Year. Very well then, here's the slice of the mince pie that I made that's been warmed up and sent back to me. I'm going to eat this little bit that remains today. Let's have a little taste then. Pastry first. Mmm. Nice crust. A little of the minced meat. That's delicious as well. Um. Oh yes, really taste that sherry brandy. And the fruits. I should add. And there are some who tried this that said they could actually taste the lamb in the suet, and they said that spoiled it a little. What I would recommend is um, rubbing it in sugar to sort of sweeten it, the suet, that is. The alternative is, of course, just to get real ox's suet from the butcher's or abattoir, if you can. You can also get vegetable suet these days, although I think that's a contradiction in terms. This was just my way around making it. You could use the um, ordinary kind, to be honest, provided you don't have a nasty attitude towards, towards flour. Gluten. So, that's mince pie, both savoury and sweet. Try it yourself if you like. If you fancy, and if you don't fancy, then don't. Thanks very much. Ta-ta! With a mixer, I'm going to mix in the coconut.
the mutton pie. I'm going to put some, yeah, mutton. That too is going to go in. An oven. At 130 degrees. I shan't be able to eat them on camera, but I shall certainly tell you later how it turned out. Try it yourself if you like.